What's up guys, what's going on? I'm back here again with the M5 and uh, today I'm kind of making a little update video if you will. It's kind of just a little informational tidbit pertaining my wheels here and pretty much uh, just having to do with any kind of three-piece wheel in general is this something you might want to watch out for and that is directly having to do with this little guy here which is a tire pressure monitor sensor that goes inside the wheel. These ones are valve stem mounted and uh, just want to make this clear, sorry I'm fidgeting around a little bit. It's monsoon season and there's mosquitoes everywhere. See a little guy flying around. But um, just want to make a disclaimer that this is no ill will against Avant Garde at all. Um, I absolutely love the product. They're gorgeously made, great attention to detail in almost every way. And uh, they've been awesome to work with. And uh, they're totally helping me take care of these little, uh, little things I found out. But pretty much what I'm talking about is on the front wheel here, you can see how the uh, tire pressure stem, or the tire valve stem should I say, is really really close to the face of the wheel here. And these aftermarket um, stainless valves are a lot smaller around than the barrel nut that attaches one of these guys. So basically there's no way I could have put that TPMS sensor through because the uh, barrel nut that attaches it just wouldn't clear the face of the wheel in order to um, secure it against the lip. I'm sorry about the uh, dirt on the wheels been driving a little bit and it's been horrible conditions out but so yeah pretty much basically just showing you that clearance there I'm about to go pop these tires off and uh, clean these wheels up and send them back in so that way they can take a look uh, back at the back at the warehouse about what I'm talking about all we need to do basically is put it back on a CNC make a few millimeter little notch right there just so that barrel nut has enough clearance to seat against that just for comparison I'll show you the uh, the rears, which you can see there is absolutely no issue. Total clearance all around. Just because of the nature of the thin tire, I mean these TPMS sensors are a pain to deal with anyway because they sit right in the drop center of the wheel, which in a design like this doesn't have a very big drop center to begin with like a lot of cast wheels do. But yeah, this is, this is more just to show you guys that um, Wheels like this are completely designed on all axes to be different depending on what offset you want, what lip sizes you want, what overall uh, widths you want, and stuff like this can happen. It's just a small oversight. I mean, it's usually not something I can imagine is really ever an issue, but regardless of brand, manufacturer, model, anything like that, there's a ton of different variables that go into, you know, including how big your uh, back pad spacing is back there. I mean everything's different on every custom wheel. So when you're dealing with something like this, this is just more to show you um, little things to look for when you get the wheels, you inspect them, just to uh, foresee this stuff before you mount them all up on your car and everything. So I'll, uh, once I get these tires popped off, I'll uh, demonstrate putting this sensor through the wheel like that just so you can see what I mean with the barrel nut in there. Make it a little clearer. So yeah, I still absolutely love the wheels. Totally recommend them. They've been awesome guys. Just a uh, small hiccup that I'm sure will get taken care of, no problem. Just figured I'd show you guys just to uh, help for a little bit for informational purposes. If you guys want to see something nerve-wracking, it's right here. Using one of these hydraulic bead breakers on something like that. Got to be real careful to make sure that you don't absolutely destroy the lip of the wheel when you're doing it. Believe me, it sucks. So if you're uh, in the oh so unlikely situation that you don't have your own tire equipment, where you uh, just do this shit on your own whenever you feel like it, and you're uh, paying a tire technician to mount and dismount your high-end wheels, um, definitely, definitely suggest tipping them like the best stripper in the world. Because believe me, they got a lot on their plate taking care of your shit. It is not easy and it's definitely not always the technician's fault if something slips and hits it. I mean, it's just, it's a definite possibility as part of the game. Just figured it's uh, something to show you guys about part of what really goes on having to do this stuff if you're not familiar with it. Stuff that is totally, totally probably a pretty good idea to do. I know a lot of machines have nylon feet that slip over these, but usually they're broken and they fall apart anyway. So definitely always taping the rim clamp section 
that are gonna clamp the outside. Um, luckily these clamp the inside lip of my wheels because the drop center's in the front. And also the bar you use for uh, pulling your bead over. Anything that's gonna make contact with your wheel, protect it and pat it as much as you can. I just figured one more little thing to show you. This is kind of a call out for Haggard Garage as if uh, you guys would care anyway, but this is how you clamp any kind of decent wheel whatsoever. You do not use these little claws and chew up the inside of your wheel. You externally clamp it with the bead broken down. Focus, there you go. That's how you do it. There's that barrel nut. Let me see if I can hold the sensor in with my leg. See? Try to put the barrel nut on like that. And it hits that face. So right in there is right where it needs a couple millimeters taken out. Just a little notch and then that should sit, slip right past the edge of the face right there. And be able to see it against the barrel like normal. All right, next day, and man, I gotta be honest, I really do like these stalkers. Pretty nice factory wheels. But hey, I like to do uh, car shows and pictures and videos and stuff, and it's honestly just kind of hard to do that if you have a stock car, so you just gotta have something that sets it apart. But I know AG's gonna get a little bit of fine tuning done on those wheels, and they'll be back before no time, I'm sure, which honestly could be a few weeks I'm fine with because I'm really, really not looking forward to mounting those 21 inch tires back up. Those uh, those rears were really a bear. The fronts aren't too bad because they're 255 30s. The 30 series isn't a big deal, but the rear I run uh, 295 25. And man, those on the 11 and a half inch wheel just really were horrible to get off. But yep, everything will be buttoned up, I'm sure, before we know it. I know this wasn't a super interesting video, just a little tidbit. It's mostly just for information because I know that's a little detail. Nobody would ever even expect that could happen on a wheel that's just like so left field. But all right, guys, I appreciate it if you made it this far watching. So let me know if you have any questions or uh, give me some ideas, some stuff you guys want to see on this car. I really want to, uh, I already have a good idea of the stuff I want to do to it. I mean, it's pretty much the basic stuff that a lot of the F10 M5 owners are doing. But yeah, let me know. I want to make some more videos. Thanks, guys.